Hello friends, in this tutorial we will see an introduction to mocking using the Spock framework. As part of the agenda, we will cover how to define and declare mocks in the Spock specification. We will see how you can validate the interactions with mock as part of the assert blocks. And we will also see an introduction to argument matchers that you can use when you are trying to verify the mocks that you have set up. So Spock provides an inbuilt mocking library as against to other frameworks like JUnit, JBehave where you have to include external mocking libraries like PowerMock, Mockito, EasyMock etc. So Spock has an inbuilt mocking functionality and that is powerful enough to be used in the unit test that you can write. So let's get started. So I've created a new project in IntelliJ. It's a Gradle based project. And in the build.gradle file, you can see that I have included uh, dependencies for Groovy and Spock. We can remove this byte buddy. We don't need it. And I have added dependency for the Spock reports. So as part of the application setup, I have created an interface called iStudentDatabase and this student database has three methods exposed. One is get student scores, which basically given a student ID, it gives you a list of student scores. There is an update method, which updates the grade of the student and there is a get student grade against the student ID. And the app is a student grade calculator which essentially takes the student database object as part of its constructor. It's basically injected into this constructor. And here you can see calculate student grade is a method which fetches the student scores from the database and it creates or performs the total of those scores and returns the respective grade based on this little business logic here. So our intention here is to mock the external dependencies in this application. Now what is an external dependency? Here you can clearly see the external dependency is the student database. So when we are going to write unit test for our application that is student grade calculator with mock we would want to not hit the real database implementation but to essentially mock it or fake it and validate whether the calls were made to the respective methods of that mock. So this video is not about getting the so let's get started. There is an also another class called student database which is an implementation of this interface and it's nothing but an in-memory database. You can see that I have created maps of scores and grades. So the score map basically maps student ID to list of scores and the grade map maps student ID to the actual grade. And I have implemented the individual methods. It's just a sample implementation in memory implementation, but in reality you would expect it to be a full fledged database kind of CRUD based application. The database backend can be anything like MySQL or Dynamo, any NoSQL or SQL, any kind of database, whatever you want. But the real goal is to mock this database as it's an external dependency and to test our application and its business logic. So let's get started. I'll add a new Groovy class and I'll name it as a sample mock spec. I'll say OK. And as we know that Groovy specs need to extend specification. Okay. So now instantiating mocks. Let's see this. This is the name of my method. And I'll say given when and then. That's the basic structure of a mock test. 
Now in instantiating mocks, I would say mocked database. This is just the name. I'll say mock and I need to say I student oh, we don't need semicolons now this is the app new student grade calculator and I'll instantiate it with the mock database so here you can see that I have defined a mock database and this is the syntax to do it in Spock. You just need to say mock and in brackets you need to give interface or the real concrete object. I have defined an instance of app which is the application under test and I have supplied the mock database inside the constructor. So now whenever our student grade calculator app is instantiated, it gets instantiated with the mocked object. So now so this given can be blank since we have done the instantiation here at the top level and when I'll say that when I'll call app dot calculate student grade with the student ID say one two three four five okay then basically I need to validate interaction with mock so let's see what what method of my mock is called in this method so if I go here, you can see student database dot get student scores with argument as student ID. So I need to validate that this get student scores method or my mock student database should be called. So I can go back and the syntax to do that is one that is the number of calls then into sign mocked database dot get student scores with student ID 12345 now let's first try and try to understand what this piece of code means this one means that we want to assert that this call was done once so if at all this calculate student grade was suppose calling this method two times or three times within that piece of function we would have written two or three here depending on the number of calls so this denotes the number of calls mock database is the mocked object itself you write dot the actual method that you want to ascertain and inside the brackets we have mentioned the argument that we expect the mock to have been called with so let's try running this sample test and see what happens I'll go this run compiling and here you can see that it got executed sample mock based test so now you can see that there were other methods as well in this code like student database dot get student scores was one then update student grade was one so let's add this as well update student grade and the grade calculated would have been since it would be null so I'll get score as 0 the grade will be C so this would be called by argument student ID as 1 2 3 4 5 and grade as C so let me copy this I'll say 1 into mock database dot update student grade and grade as C let's see if it works And here you can see that it works so the pa the passing of this test means that these mock interactions happened when your code or when your action got executed now let's try probably updating this data so if I want to see whether my test works with any other data or not I'll say say suppose grade as a but I know that it was not called with A but it was called with C so in this case we'll expect our test to fail let's try running this and see what result we get okay so now you can see here two few invocations for this okay 
so we expected this but this does not happen it does give you that what actually happened so it says un unmatched invocations and you it actually gives you that what it was called with so it gives one two three four five and see so this is validating mocks interactions with the exact set of arguments so i'll make it as c now let's see how we can use argument matchers we have so far seen argument matches as real argument matches. Now let me add a new test for say argument matches generic. So here what we will do is suppose we just want to see that it this method was called we do we are not bothered about what argument it was called with. So let's try to run a test like that. So I'll copy this code and let's change these assertions so I'll say one into mocked database dot update student grade now suppose I don't know what what exact student ID will it be getting called with I just need to check that this was called I am not bothered about the exact argument so I'll say there's a special syntax I'll say underscore as string because we know that the data type will be string and that's it similarly the other method one into mocked database dot so here it were two arguments let me change it as or let's keep the grade as is and the other argument as unknown get student scores string okay so let's try run this and we can see that this test passes now so here underscore as respective data type it matches any string basically it just sees that this method was called with with the first argument as any string and second argument as c okay so now let's see another example to validate the order of interactions that is the order in which the mocked methods were called so if you can see here here we have written an order in the reverse way so first get student scores was called and second update student grade was called but since we have written it here like this the test still passes suppose we want also to validate that what order the mocks were called so Spock again provides you a simple syntax for that let me copy this back again generic with order validation this is the name so here it does not matter because this is not the correct syntax to validate order what we can do is if I write multiple then here then it means that it will now check for the order of the mock interaction as well so with this code what it expects is that the update student grade should have been called before the get student scores method but we know that this is not true so we'll expect this test to fail you can see here that it failed it says wrong invocation order and it says last invocation was update student grade so let me reverse this and now we know that this is the correct order and let me try running this again and we can see the test now passes so in this tutorial we basically saw different ways to validate mocks we saw some argument matchers like generic and specific argument matchers and we also saw how to validate the order of interactions so and in the next videos we'll look in more details about spy and stubs so stay tuned. Thank you.